Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to give you a little overview or look inside into my newest uh, photo book project, another travel book. It's been a while since I made a video of this kind and this one is going to be in three parts as well. So lots of videos coming in the next few weeks. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up to help the algorithm find more videos like this one. So yes, it's been quite a long time since I, I posted a video and I've been very, very busy with my uh, travel map creator shop both the photo book maps, but also the travel journals, posters, and so on. So if you're interested in those, you can have a look at that, but this video is not about that. So the newest um, photo book project that I made is this um, Panama photo book, which is a DIY project. So I created this book, including the design and the actual making of the book. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the specs and page through the book so you can see the designs and how it looks. And in the second video, I'm going to show you how I made the book, so the DIY process, assembling the book, printing the book, and stitching the book. And in the third video, I'm going to show you how I designed some of the layouts inside in Affinity Publisher and just take you through the process, how I started the project, how I set up the layout, how I came up with the ideas inside. So if you're interested in those, then make sure to check back. So this book is an A5 size book. And the reason why I went with the smaller size this time is because I realized that I am traveling so much and if I'm going to create a 12 by 12 lay flat photographic photo book for every single journey that I have, it's gonna take up so much space, it's so expensive, and it's also going to be very heavy. So if you ever have to move, you know, even within one room from shelf to shelf, or if you have to move home, it's very heavy. The last time I moved, it was actually my photo book collection that was the heaviest to bring up. If I make them not photographic, so thinner pages and A5, then I can have a lot of pages, a lot of photos, and it's going to take up a lot less space. Let's not talk more about that. So that's the cover and it's a hardcover book as you can see, and it's a printed hardcover book and um, it's Panama 2022. And on the spine, you can see the same, so obviously when I put them on the shelf, I want them to be all the same size and I want them to be able to show which one is from where. That's just my logo for the company and let's dive in. So the first sheet is an end sheet and as you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's a linen textured sheet and then this is where the book starts. So I just wanted to put a little um, contents at the beginning because I have page numbers in this book and I think the book is 108 pages. So it's quite a long book and that's how 108 pages look. And the paper I used is 200 GSM. So it's fairly thick, but it's not like, you know, a flush mount album or a lay flat photographic album. And what you can see here is that it lays completely flat because I used a stitched binding method. So I stitched the pages together before gluing them at the spine and this allows the book to open completely flat. The only difference between this and a, a seamless lay flat book is that this page was printed separately to that. So there's sometimes a little mismatch because of the printer. I know I could have probably tweaked this, but it's only on a few pages and it doesn't bother me so much. So that's my first page where obviously my obsession with maps comes in. So I wanted to choose this kind of uh, muted green because it's such a green country and that shows the main route and the miles flown. And this one is a smaller map of the things we visited in Panama, so the San Blas Islands, Gamboa Rainforest and the city and a little description. And here is the itinerary, which just shows on which day what we did. So very, very simple and minimalistic, as you can see. And again, not an ad, but if you want similar kinds of maps, go to my website, thetravelmapcreator.com. Lots of map styles available. 
And this was the first destination, Panama City. And again, I just created a, a Panama map and I pinpointed the, the locations we visited and a little list here. And that was the hotel room. So that's just a, a little uh, simple layout again. And this is where day one starts. So as you can see, I put here day one for each new day. And this is the design that's gonna be all the way through in the book. So white borders around, sometimes some full bleed images and very, very simple, not too overcrowded. And whenever I have text, I chose these two fonts, which is Dido and Avenir, I think. And there, this one is, uh, as you can see, serif, and it's capital and lowercase, and this one is capital only, and then there's a body text and a black line to finish off. And sometimes this text kind of goes or protrudes into the photo because I, I quite like that look. And here you can see the stitching in the middle. I've also got some page numbers and let's go on. So that's a full bleed image, as you can see. I love these for my favorite shots. This was just going from New Town to Old Town in Panama, it's like three cities in one. And this is the old city. And here you can see I put a little color um, edge to the page and this color is always matching kind of the, the most dominant color on the page. And you can see again my text, very minimalist and uh, the photo layout. I like combining full bleed images with images that have border around them or even if not border but like a white dividing space. I think it adds a little bit of um, elegance to the page. Another double spread about the basilica. Another full bleed image of a lovely square and Cero Ancon is a little hike up to the forest in the city. Lots of wildlife to see there, by the way. And that was the view from the top. And here, thankfully, the page is matched up. And there's the kind of print quality that I managed to get on my home printer. Well, it's an industrial printer, but it's still at home. It's not done by another company. And now here it is day two. So you can see the same kind of design and going on. So as you can see, most of the time I don't have more than two, three pictures on a page, mostly because it's a small photo book, but I would rather have more pages than a lot of photos on one page. I don't like it when it's really overcrowded because if you have like nine small photos, it's very hard to see any detail on them. Another full bleed image. This was the view from the causeway. There's a big storm coming an island that I have here, yeah, I forgot to say, I have a little ribbon that I can use inside the book. So it's just a little evening fun in the shopping malls. And this was our day trip to the Gamboa Rainforest. Beautiful place. And here you can see another little map showing where we went and how we got there and so on. The Panama Canal. A little color again on the page. I didn't do this everywhere. I didn't want to overdo it. And you have to think about the bleed when you trim your book. This was the monkeys who came to the, to the boat. They were so sweet. So there's some of the photos I took with the camera. These are always much nicer than the ones with the phone. But to be honest, I'm getting very lazy to carry multiple lenses and cameras on my holidays. There's the smallest monkey in the world, I think. They were really sweet on the tree waiting. Just a couple more photos from there. And obviously when you have a nice landscape shot, so simple, just put it across two pages, add some white border so it pops out. Then going to Punta Pacifica. And here you can see again that this photo kind of goes around the other page. I think it's a very nice idea to kind of pull photos across two pages, but not to cover the entire page because it makes this section of white pop out a bit more instead of just finishing the photo at the end of the page. And the rest of the pages are similar. It's just more photos from San Blas Islands, beautiful islands. It was pouring rain for the whole time but it was still absolutely amazing. This little dog came and made friends with us. Starfish in the hot Caribbean sea. 
I mean, the photos still look okay, but it was raining continuously until the last hour when um, it finally stopped when we got to Dog Island and the sun came out. And again, as you can see, sometimes I'm using text without the titles because there's not really a title to go with this, but there's some description going on. And back to the city. Now again, this is a bit annoying here, but it's just one of those things that's very hard to avoid when you don't have like proper trim lines and when you have to work with the paper you've got. But again, it doesn't bother me so much because it's still legible and looks fine. The sloths were so sweet on the trees everywhere. And it's back to the old city. So much color it was a beautiful place. And again, you can, you can always play with the idea of having a bigger photo in the middle and uh, smaller ones around. The old colonial buildings. I think they're colonial. Please don't judge me if they are not, uh, but I assume they are. And goodbye. And what you'll see at the very end is that I have a QR code, which I wanted to put into the book, but it might change. And that's why I would rather just put it in as a little leaflet at the end, because I do travel vlogging and I love doing that because a video is always so much more than a collection of photos. I can't describe this, but when I watch the video, I feel like I'm there again. But when I look at the photos, I don't get the same feeling. So when I'm done with the video editing, I put it on YouTube and then I create a QR code. So when I scan it on my phone, I can watch the video of the holiday or whoever is looking at this photo book. Again, the reason why it's here is because I haven't quite finished the travel vlog. It's only a section of it. So this QR code is going to change later on. I might just put it onto a sticker and stick it in on the last page or somewhere. And that's a really good idea if you if you do travel vlogging to include a QR code. And that's really it. That's the end of the book. And as you can see, I've got um, headband on the top, on the bottom, and that's how the book looks. So if you like what you see, then check back and I'm going to show you how I actually made this book and how I designed the book. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.